for us, we formalized the definition of our culture into 10 core values. And uh, we actually didn't always have core values at Zappos. We've been around for 11 years, and it wasn't until five or six years into it that we rolled out our core values, because it was kind of something that a bunch of us, myself personally, resisted, because it felt like one of those big corporate things to do. And you know, a lot of corporations have, they might call them core values or guiding principles or so on. But the problem is usually they're very lofty sounding. They kind of read like a press release the marketing department put out. Uh, they sound just like their competitors. And maybe you learn about it on day one of your job, but then it becomes this meaningless plaque on the lobby wall. Well, we wanted to come up with committable core values. And by committable, meaning we're willing to hire or fire people based on those values, uh, completely independent of their actual job performance. And when you use that criteria, it's actually a really hard list to come up with. It took us a year to come up with it. And it wasn't just a few executives that spent a long weekend at an offsite somewhere and came up with the core values. But instead, I just emailed the entire company and asked our employees, what should our values be? Got a whole bunch of different responses back and went back and forth for about a year. And then he eventually came up with our list of 10 core values. So this is our list of 10 core values. And um, we actually have interview questions for each and every one of these core values. And, and actually, one of the cool things that I like about the list we ended up with is if you do a Google search for any one of these core values uh, by itself, in almost all the cases, Zappos is the number one search result. Whereas for take almost any other company, uh, do a search for one of their core values. And page after page after page, you won't see that company name show up. So the one that actually probably trips us up the most during the hiring process is this last one, be humble. Because there's a lot of really smart, talented people out there that are also egotistical. And you know, for us, it's not a question. We just won't hire them. Whereas the conversation at most other companies would be, well, this person might be kind of annoying and rub you the wrong way, but he's going to add a lot of value. And therefore, we should hire that person. And that one person may or may not bring the company culture downhill, but I think if you keep making compromises like that over and over and over again, that's why most large companies don't have great company cultures. But it's actually probably the one that's hardest to actually ask an actual interview question for, because you can't just say, how humble are you? And they say, I'm the most humble person in the whole wide world. <laughs> right? And so, um, but one of, one, one of the ways we test for this is um, a lot of our candidates actually are from out of town. And so we'll pick them up from the airport in Zappos shuttle, give them a tour, and then they'll spend the entire day interviewing. Well, at the end of the day of interviews, the recruiter will circle back with the shuttle driver and ask how they were treated. And it doesn't matter how well the day of interviews went. If they didn't treat the shuttle driver well, then we won't hire them. It's not even a question. So I'll give some uh, examples of, other, uh, of interview questions we asked. Number three, create fun and a little weirdness. Uh, one of our interview questions is actually, on a scale 1 to 10, how weird are you? And you know, if you answer a 1, you might be a little bit too straight-laced for the Zappos culture. If you answer a 10, you might be too psychotic for us. But it's actually not so much the actual number we care about. Our whole belief is that everyone's a little weird somehow. And this is really more just a fun way of saying that we really recognize and celebrate each person's individuality. And, we want their true personality to come out and shine in the workplace. You know, there's so many people in corporate America where they're a different person at home on weekends versus when they show up into the office on Mondays. And they end up leaving a little part of themselves, or in a lot of cases, a big part of themselves at home. And that leads to discussions about work-life separation or work-life balance. And for us, actually, rather than worry about work-life separation, we really think about it in terms of work-life integration. We want the person to be the same person at home or in the office. Because what we found is that's when the great ideas come out. That's when their creativity shines. And that's when true friendships are formed, not just coworker relationships. And that's really what, when people are in that environment, that's when the passion comes out. And that's really what's driven a lot of our growth over the years. And core value number four, uh, be adventurous, creative, and open-minded. So one of our interview questions here is on a scale 1 to 10, how lucky are you in life? One is, I don't know why bad things always seem to happen to me. And 10 is, I don't know why good things always seem to happen to me. Well, we don't want to hire the ones because they're bad luck. And we don't want bad luck to <laughs> come to Zappos. That, 
That wouldn't be good. Uh, no, but this was actually inspired by a research study that I had read about several years earlier where they actually asked that exact same question to a random group of people. And they got you know, some ones, some tens, a bunch of answers in between. And then afterwards, they had them do a task. And the task was to go through a newspaper and count the number of photos that were in that newspaper. But what the participants didn't know was that it was actually a fake newspaper. And sprinkled throughout the newspaper were these headlines that would say things like, if you're reading this now, you can stop. The answer is 37, uh, plus collect an extra $100. And what they found was that the people that consider themselves unlucky in life generally never noticed the headlines. They went through the task and you know, eventually came up with the right answer, whereas the people that consider themselves lucky in life generally stopped early and made the extra $100. So the takeaway is that it's not so much that people are inherently lucky or unlucky in life, but luck is really more about being open to opportunity beyond just how the task or situation presents itself. So that's why we asked that question for core value number four, be creative, adventurous, and uh, open-minded. Uh, and so one of our other core values is about being open and honest. Uh, it's really just all about transparency. And we really try to be as transparent as possible to our customers, to our employees, uh, to our vendors as well. So for our customers, for example, we hold a quarterly all-hands meeting for our employees, and we actually live stream that on the internet so anyone can tune in, and employees will ask questions about company financials or what brands we're going to carry and so on. The other thing we do is uh, when there's a reporter that wants to do a story on us, whether it's for TV or magazine or so on, uh, you know, most companies, most corporations, what would happen is they're escorted around by a PR person, and the PR person says, you can talk to that VP over there and that person in communications over there. Everyone else is off limits. Don't talk to anyone else. Whereas what we do is we give a tour, and at the end of the tour, we say, bathroom's over there, lunchroom's over there. Walk around, talk to whoever you feel like, and when you're done, come find me. And the reason we're comfortable doing that is because we know that employees understand the long-term vision of the company, and we know that employees we've hired, their personal values match the corporate values. So every employee is just automatically living the brand. And you know, they're not gonna, we don't do media training, and so when the reporter talks to 10 different employees, they're not going to get the exact same phrases or sound bites and, and so on. But what they are going to find is consistency in every employee's attitude and more importantly, the authenticity in their interactions. And so that's why we, we're, we just tell anyone, just walk around and talk to whoever you, you want, because that's what we're comfortable with. Uh, with our employees, we have a monthly newsletter called Ask Anything, where it's literally that. Employees can ask about financials or uh, brands or whatever, and we'll find the best person to answer them, and then put that all in the newsletter, and we send that out to in a, the entire company once a month. 